All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to um, show you how to take a model inside of ZBrush and uh, get it prepared for painting inside of Substance Painter. Um, and this is like for, like you have like something with really super high polygon count and you want to be able to paint it inside Substance Painter. So I have a model here that I made, which is this fish. Um, and this has uh, three subtools in it. We have the, uh, the fish itself, we have these fins, and these fins. So there's a couple different ways you could go about this. Um, the first is you can merge all these together and make one object out of it, but let's say I want to show you how to do it with multiple subtools you might have an object with a ton of subtools and you want to have all those have different materials on it so we'll just say for the sake of argument that we want this fish body itself to be one material and this fin to be another one and this fin to be another one it probably wouldn't be a very actual thing you would actually do you'd probably either merge these together or do something like that in fact i might merge these two fins together and just make sub two subtools out of it um and right now let's see what we have for subdivisions so this doesn't have any subdivisions, and it has um, has one million polygons. This one has six hundred thousand, and this one actually has subdivisions. So um, I will show you how to get the fish body like this too, where you can go from high to low subdivisions. Um, this other one I think is the same way, four subdivisions. So when this fin is at its lowest subdivision, we're looking at this fin right now, let me zoom in on it. You see that's pretty low. And this is 100,000 polygons, that looks pretty good. And then 1,600 here. <clears throat> so we could probably use this as it's set up right now. Um, but the main thing that we're gonna look at is this fish body. We'll get this to behave the same way. So like you, when you sculpt something in here, you know, you might have started with a sphere like I did and then like end up with a bunch of stuff and like the geometry might not be that great, you know, there might be a lot of like weird little triangles here and there and stuff like that. So typically what I do is I start by, um, before I remesh this, I am going to make a copy of it. So I go over here, I click on the fish body that's selected now and I go over to duplicate. So now I have a copy of that fish body. I'll get rid of these fins for right now, so we'll turn those off and we'll just focus on this. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to Z remesh this so it's much lower poly count, like probably what you actually want for the finished thing. So we'll go over here to geometry and Z remesher. And typically the way I set this up, so um, we can see here it's 5,000 polygon. 5,000 is the target. That's going to target 5,000 polygons. So Z remesher is going to do whatever it's going to do. Um, if we turn that off, it'll, it'll, it will target that. Um, so let's, let's just actually just try this right now and see what it does. So we'll just go Z remesher. And this will take a few seconds because it's kind of big. If your computer is kind of slow when you're doing this part of it, um, you can also decimate this first. I typically don't because even with a million polygons, it goes fast enough. Um, probably the time it would take to actually decimate this would be about the same um, as just waiting for C remesher to do its work. So let's turn off this one just so we can see. Okay, and now we're down to 9,000. So right here we had 5,000, so we got somewhat close. Um, this looks pretty good. I don't see any issues. Um, typically, if I'm going to like you know, just be rendering this as a still scene. Um, I'll usually shoot for something a little higher um, than this, uh, just because my computer can handle it. Um, this would probably work fine though. I don't see any problems with this mesh. Um, so let's just use that. Um, okay, so now what we wanna do is we wanna like actually like make a high resolution version of this too. So we can do that by subdividing and then reprojecting the old details on it. So right now, if I go here to geometry and hit divide, it's going to give me a subdivision level. It's going to get smoother, but it's not going to have any of the actual detail from that. So if I go to another higher subdivision level, it just gets smoother and smoother. So you see the difference here between this and this. Um, 
is pretty drastic even though it's close to the same number of polygons. Um, sorry about that. Um, so on this one, let's go back to this. We'll undo those subdivisions for now. Okay, we're back to this. So 10,000 polygons. So what we'll do, um, I usually like use hotkeys for this because I'm going to use this project button right here. And what this does is I will be projecting anything that's visible. So I'm going to make this other body visible here. So now we have one fish, the high resolution fish that we originally sculpted underneath the new version of the fish. Um, I'm going to hit control D to subdivide it, and then I'm going to project all. This will project anything that's visible, so make sure your other subtools are not visible here, that you want to project the detail only from the, the original original model for that part. So we'll project all, and now you'll see that we've got a slightly higher subdivision that projected all the details from that. This is still not quite high resolution enough, so um, we'll control D again, and project all. And control is, and you see when these overlap, you can see like where the differences are. So this isn't quite like matching up this model yet. So I'll hit control D again and project all. And now we're way closer. Um, this is like not quite as many polygons as it was before, 600,000. So I'm just going to do it one more time. It might actually overshoot, but that's okay too. So project all. So yeah, now we're at 2.4 or 5 million. Doesn't really matter though. It's going to get real close though to the original original projection. If there's like places in here that um, uh, that don't match exactly, and you're concerned about them, I mean, when I look at this, this looks like almost identical to my original model, except you can see like the topology is a lot better when I when I zoom in and out. Like you have like better better uh, better quads in here compared to the way it was before. Um, so to me, this looks really good. We're probably going to render it like you know, probably like that or something like that. So that to me looks pretty nice. So now what we have, we can delete this original version of the model. So I'm going to delete that, and we have this fish here. Um, so what this will allow us to do is unwrap it at its lowest subdivision level. So if we go back to this subdivision level one here. So now we have this. This will be like much easier to unwrap and for you to paint on in Substance Painter. And Substance Painter will actually bake that high resolution version of that fish back onto this. So we'll get all the detail even though we'll only have this number of polygons. Um, so the next thing to do is unwrap. And the way you do that, if you're just going to use ZBrush, um, is in this plugin called UV Master. So I'm going to take this Z plugin here and I'm going to move it. Whoops. There we go. So I move it over into the sidebar, so you can you can grab anything in, in ZBrush, and like that little that little icon there uh, allows you to grab out the menu, and you can like go and put it over here. We're going to use UV Master a lot here, so um, so it's just easier to have it over here on the side as opposed to going up here and you know messing around with this menu over here. It's just a lot easier to have it open all the time. Okay, so a couple things about UV Master, like first of all, like when you have when you have like these multiple subdivision levels, you'll want to work with the clone of it you won't want to work directly on this model um, and UV Master lets you do that by this button right here where it says work on clone it says right there highly recommended they're not kidding in fact it would probably I don't even know if it would work correctly if you didn't clone it in this particular situation it might um, but when I hit this work on clone it's gonna make a clone of it changes the texture of it the reason for that is, is because you can do some control painting and things like that so one thing you can do is you can just immediately go here and say um, just unwrap. Um, for some stuff that might work, my guess is with this one it's going to like not do a very good job of unwrapping it um, just from experience of, of using this. So, But like we'll go ahead and do that really quick just so you can see what happens. So this would be the typical thing you would go unwrap. Now if we would have unwrapped this with a million polygons this would have been super slow. Um, and now it, it finished really super fast it's this thing's lightning fast when you have like a, a optimized model like this so five seconds is all it took on my machine um but now you have uvs but like what do they look like you have no idea so there is this button over here that says flatten and this will flatten it out and surprisingly like this isn't 
this is not actually terrible in my opinion um, we could depending on what you're doing you could probably get away with this it looks like it um, it made a cut right here that looks like it must be the back fin um, you can see all the detail here this is probably the head eyes um, like the gills right here yeah it's not terrible this is this is part of and you can see how like it it made some arbitrary cuts in some kind of strange places um, which like I said it depends on what you're doing if you're just doing some concepting like what I do mostly like this would probably work fine um, we could actually test this out inside of here so you have to flatten first and you can cop so we're working on a clone this is not our original model so we're going to copy UVs and we're going to go back up here and we're going to find our original fish uh, I can't remember which one it is. It's this one, I believe. Yes. Um, so this is the original fish, and we can go here and we can paste the UV right on top of that. That's we have that subtool still selected. Um, we can get rid of this paint thing here, and we can go back to I don't know red classic. Um, so if we want to see what that looks like, so, so now that we have UVs, there's some things we could do right here inside of ZBrush. Um, just to test it out. There's this texture map over in the tools. This is where in the tool menu. Um, and you can apply a texture map to it. And I'm going to apply texture 19, which is this kind of classic UV texture map. And it will do it. So, yeah, you can see this is, the, it, it actually isn't ideal now that I look at it. Like, you can see how this is stretched a lot compared to this area here. Um, depending on what you're doing, that may be kind of a deal it's just going to be like you know if you use like a image map or something like that it's going to stretch those out there and it's may it may be apparent it depends it depends on what kind of material you're going to lay down on this um you could always you could always try it and see see if you like it but i'm going to show you a way to um kind of make a better unwrap of this um so we'll turn this texture off texture off and we'll go here and we're back in subtool. We have our fish selected and we'll go to UV and we'll say work on clone again. So now we have a new clone of this. <clears throat> and, oh, actually, okay, so one thing, there's a few different things you can do. So one is, is that you have this enable control painting. So if you remember in that last one, you saw how like it, it split off one of these fins to the outside. Um, you, can, you can actually like enable this control painting and say protect here. And you can say, I, and you can start painting on this. So if I start painting on this, it's going to basically tell UV Master, hey, like, don't, don't mess with this right here, right? Or whatever. Or maybe you want to say, I want to attract to a certain place. So I want to attract it, you know, there. Or let's actually, actually maybe better just say, like, oh, I want to attract it up here. So my experience with this is it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't. Um, once you start getting into this kind of this kind of area where you're like actually like trying to paint like the the actual seams on here where you want it to where you want it to unwrap um i kind of find at that point you might as well just take it into blender or something like that and unwrap it yourself <laughs> but that's just me um this let's let's see what happens when we do this this might work um but i'm going to show you the third way which is even like even better than this um so we will unwrap that did six seconds and we can flatten it and oh that actually is a lot better um we actually might be able to live with this one but i will show you a third a third thing you can do to have even more control over this so let's unflatten it let's copy the uvs let's go back to our original fish and we'll paste the uvs and then we'll go back down here and we'll go to the texture map and this and you can see like already like yeah that is a lot better that's actually pretty darn good um yeah all the seams are going to be up here along that fin i'm actually surprised it did that well but down on the bottom so if you're going to be rendering this you know from its side um you'll have no problems whatsoever um texturing this um you know if you wanted to um, go back to this clone, flatten it. Um, 
you could there's ways you could edit this like if you wanted to like I, like you, you can't actually tell it like exactly where to cut so you couldn't cut this and then like straighten these out or anything like that you'd have to take this into another piece of software to do that um these these things can be scaled um uh like if you use a transpose tool you can go here and you can like scale scale this up or down um you can rotate whoops not like that i always get confused with this thing yeah anyway if you are really into the transpose tool you can get into that um anyway that's if you wanted to do that I'm going to show you this third thing you can do though. Um, let's go back to our original here, sub tool. Let's get rid of this texture map again. Texture off. Okay. So um, let's turn the poly paint off and get this back to this. Okay. So you have this. Let's say like you actually wanted like this head to be a separate UV map. Um, just for the sake of argument, there may be a lot of different reasons. Like if you're like doing a human or something like that and you wanted to like separate the arms out from the head and things like that and you wanted to like have all those be their own separate island, um, the way you would do that, do I have, so I have um, symmetry on. If it's not on um, for you and you have a symmetrical model, you hit X, like right now it's on, off, and now it's on. Okay, so the way you do that is is basically draw a mask on something by holding down the control key. See, it, I know I have mask on, and I can select this stuff. Now, if you want to do it even faster, you can go brush and go M and do mask lasso and hit OK on that. And now when I hit control, it's going to give me this lasso so I can go here and I get pretty precise with this and say, let's say I want this right here. So I have that masked off. Let's say I want that to be its own island. I don't think you would actually want that, but let's just say for the sake of argument you do. And this is going to give you control of where the actual seams end up being, more or less. Um, so when you have that selected, you can hit Control W, and it looks like it did nothing because we don't sh we aren't showing our polygroups. Basically, what I just did is make a polygroup. So now you can see this this part of the head is now its own polygroup, and I can continue to do that. I can go and mask. For instance, this fin off, and let's say I want that to be its own island. If I get a little more precise here. Let's say that's its own island, right? And let's say I want this to be its own island. Control W, once again, this is its own island. Control W, and let's just say maybe I'll turn off. Um, I'll turn off that lasso and just and just draw this in and just say like maybe down here we'll like create another island just so it kind of splits it up control w that's another island and down here that's another oops control w no that's an island okay so now we have all these different islands so these will actually these will actually work with uv master so now I can go here, I can go clone, once again, work on clone, I'll show my polygroups here, and then I just need to turn on this polygroups thing. Leave symmetry on, this is a symmetrical model, you can turn it off, up to you. Um, I'm going to unwrap this, and now I'm going to flatten it. And now you can see this gave every single one of these pieces its own island, it looks pretty good. I can probably go over here, unflatten, I can see what this looks like with the texture on it again. Texture, and texture 9, oh, that's the wrong one, texture 19, and honestly that first one was better, but um, in a lot of cases um, this is going to be better, um, where you have, you kind of give UV Master some hints about like what you want the different different pieces to be um, okay so I think for our purposes I am going to go with that second one that we made which I believe is the one we have on there right now since I didn't copy and paste that last one so texture map yep this is the this is the one here um, this one looks good to me, so I'm going to go with that one. Um, 
Step tool. Okay, so now we have to do these. Um, and this is going to be exactly the same thing. Um, these are actually going to be a lot easier. So we'll start with this one. We'll go work on clone. We have this. These already have um, already have some poly groups in them. So um, we could use those. But I think I'll just unwrap these and see how it goes. Um, yeah, let's just unwrap them with the poly groups. So symmetries on, poly groups, we won't have to do anything special here, I don't think. We could just go unwrap um, and flatten. Oh, uh, yeah, so this had poly groups on those edges. That's not very good. That's it's probably fine, but um, unflatten. I'm going to turn off poly groups and just, it, it'll be able to figure this out on its own without the poly groups. So flatten. And this looks okay to me, but let's go ahead and unflatten and then check it out with an actual texture map. So texture 19, and there's a little tiny bit of stretching, honestly. Probably not going to notice it depending on like what kind of texture you're doing. Um, it's not bad at all. It's actually pretty, pretty good. Um, so good, we'll copy that. Copy these, go back up here, get our original model. And then we'll go paste UVs. And it doesn't paste the texture, so we'll have to go back here and do this again. Texture 19. All right. So now we got that one. Um, yeah, obviously you have like a lot more density down here because you're like giving it a whole UV space just for these two fins. So compared to like this whole fish getting like one UV space. Um, but that's cool. Um, that might not be the case if you were doing something like a little more realistic than this. Like I would have just merged these together and made this one big model. But anyway, now we have um, this one. So we'll just do the same thing. Work on clone. Um, unwrap. Super fast. Flatten. That's probably fine. Unflatten. We'll just double check. Texture map. Texture map. Texture 19, all right, looks pretty good. This is kind of weird here. Um, like th this right here got cut. So, you know, you could go back and do what I showed you before and like and like use that control painting and say like, you know, try to put the seam there and it would do it. Or if you're really concerned about it, like I said, you could just take this into another piece of software and like actually like tell it where to put the seams and then wrap it manually. Like this would be pretty easy to unwrap in Blender or something like that, but I don't know. I, it's just it's just so simple. Like once you get the hang of this workflow, just to do it all in ZBrush, especially if you're just concepting really quick, you want to get it super fast in a substance painter and see what it looks like with you know with the material on it or whatever. Um, so I'm actually going to leave it like that because probably like the, the kind of stuff I do, I'm probably going to use triplanar projection. That seems not going to really show up anyway. So neither here nor there. So anyway, I'll copy it. Go back to this one and paste it. And then just to double check, we'll do the texture map again over here. Put it on there. Uh, make the rest of my sub tools visible. I hit F, and that will like bring us back out to be able to see the whole thing. And that looks pretty good. So now what we have, <clears throat> like I said before, we had um, this fin and this fin already had subdivision levels. So we can go here and we can like crank them all up to. This is already on four. Um, we can crank it down to one. So what we'll do first is we'll we'll go ahead and export our low model. Um, so I, I want to put the subdivision levels down on all of these. Geometry, subdivision level one, and fish, geometry, subdivision one. Okay, everything's on one. Okay, so my experience with Substance Painter is, is that it likes to have the different parts be named correctly in order to bake these normal maps. Um, so what I do is I rename all of these, and this is the really stupid part of this. I'm sure there's a better way to do it, but let's just say body, and we're going to call it low, right? And this we'll call fin bottom low, and then this one we'll call it, is that, was that actually the bottom? That was actually the side. So we'll call this one rename fish and I'll show you in substance painter why we put that underscore low there 
Um, it'll make sense when we get there. Rename uh, fin bottom low. Uh, one thing before we get get into this fully, let me just like talk a little bit about this too. In the UV master, when you say work on clone and then you enable the control painting. Um, it has some cool stuff here like you can like you can use control painting to control the density the, the texel density of like any part of your model so let's say you like wanted like the eye to not have as much resolution you could you can say you know give it a half the resolution of everything else you could paint that on and then it will give more density to the rest of your model so if like you have parts of it that are like hidden or anything like that or like for instance like you're only going to render the front of this um, you could like you could lower the density over here and that way you give yourself more resolution over here so if you're using like you know only a 2k texture map or something like that you could get most of that 2k texture map on this side i didn't show that because we're not going to do that but maybe i'll <clears throat> um so yeah that and then there is you could do it multiply say i want a higher density in certain parts lower density um the when we painted on those lines to tell it to attract and um, protect different areas. You can also do attract from ambient occlusion. So it would say like, it'd probably look at like this, this gill here and, and see that like there'd be a lot of ambient occlusion in that area and try to put the seams there. Uh, probably try to put the seams like in between these fins and things like that. Like, so you can, there's a whole bunch of things you could do with this, but, um, but like for what I showed you already is like, like most of it. Um, anyway, so now we have this model. First thing, I'm going, to, I'm going to also get rid of these textures now because we don't necessarily need them anymore. So let's go here, texture off, and sub tool, texture. So I have, I have my system set up with custom menus here. Um, I'm just I'm actually just using the default menu so I don't confuse you with my custom stuff but like you can there's ways you can arrange all this stuff to make all the all this kind of action a lot faster there's also some plugins that will do repeat and stuff for you but I'm just showing you how to do it with the built-in um, default menus um, so we got sub tool and fish and we're going to turn the texture off which is over to texture map go to texture and texture off okay so we can turn these uh, poly, poly groups off too and then Let's just do that again. Okay, so here's our low model. So I know like to get this into Substance Painter, we have to export it. So the best way I found is to use this FBX exporter, also in the plugin menu for some reason. I don't know why this is a plugin and not just part of it. UV Master the same way, I don't know why it's a plugin. It comes standard with it. You don't have to install these or anything like that. Okay, so I usually do smooth normals on here. Um, I do visible. It's going to export all this together. Each one of these is a different material set. Um, and usually the defaults here are fine. Um, there's some other options here if you want to get fancy with it. Um, I usually don't need it sometimes, but not usually. Um, anyway, so I'm going to just export this and I'll create a new folder here. We're in so tutorial and I'm going to rename this. It, it takes the first sub tool and gives it, that's the name it's going to give it. I'm going to call this fish low um, instead of the actual part of it here. So I save that and that should only take a few seconds. Okay, so now we'll do the high version. So what we'll do is go to the fish, we'll go to geometry, go crank it all the way up to the highest subdivision. And I know for a fact there's a plugin that will that will take everything and put it to the highest subdivision for you. you go search for that on um, the Pixel Logic site. Um, in the in those, um, I take the fins. I'm going to take that first one, crank up to the highest. This one, geometry, crank up to the highest. Okay, so now we are all at highest subdivision levels for both those fins and the fish. So this will be our high resolution version of it. And then we just need to rename these. So rename body. Hi. This is one of those ridiculous things in ZBrush. The way you rename things, you can't just click on it there. Apparently, you have to actually go down there. Hi. Rename. Hi. So this will like help Substance Painter um, figure out like 
how to bake the normal maps individually without like letting the rest of the body interfere with like the fins, especially where they overlap and stuff. If we didn't do this, it would still bake, but you would get like, I don't know, like weird artifacts and stuff like that here where it's trying to like bake this body onto this fin and vice versa. So you would get like weird normal map stuff going on there. Um, and doing this, even though it's kind of a pain, um, will help you avoid that issue. Um, yeah, I think that is just about it for that. So we can go here and we can go export and we'll call it fish high. Okay, this is going to take a little while longer because I don't know, two and a half million polygons apparently take a little while to save. Okay, that exported, so now we can close this, close that. We can go over to Substance Painter. So open up Substance Painter. a little bit better here okay so we're in substance painter and here is how I do this so I typically um, will go to new and I'm going to select um, ZBrush that's fish 7 tutorial and you want to load the low polygon version of the fish this is the one we're going to work on um, so open that and the only two big settings you have to change here and for this particular workflow, um, since we don't, have, we don't have normal maps or anything baked already, so we're just going to change the resolution. I'm going to say, let's just say, let's do 2K. Um, if you really wanted to go crazy, go 4K. I'm on really high resolution, let's do two for the, our purposes. I typically am going to be rendering this in Blender, um, maybe Houdini. In both cases, uh, OpenGL um, for the normal map format is great. Um, you can always change this later on if it doesn't work for whatever render you're using. You can just look up what normal map format that it uses. Um, but that's pretty much it. We just do that and then we hit OK. I, this compute tangent space per fragment, I forget exactly what this does, but I think you would click this normally for if you're doing Unreal or Unity or something like that. Not sure. Anyway. Okay. Now we have our fish, and this looks pretty good in here. We got the low resolution version of it, and you see it kind of smooth things out, even though it's like low resolution, those normals are already smooth from the FBX export. Um, so in Substance Painter, the first thing that we need to do is we need to bake that high resolution version onto this low resolution version. The way you do that, and this, is, this also bakes a whole bunch of other maps like curvature, thickness, ambient occlusion, It'll even do thickness if you're like you're going to be doing like uh, subsurface scattering and stuff like that. Um, and typically, I'll just bake all those maps because you'll use those like later on in the texturing process for various masks and things like that. Um, but this will also bake the normal map for you. So the way you do this is is that you um, click that bake me mesh maps over here, um, and then you have high definition meshes, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to click this button, and we're going to select fish high open and then we're going to go down here and this is where that whole thing with the high and low comes in it, it says right here high poly mesh suffix high low poly low and you would think that would be enough but you actually have to go here and you have to say by mesh name um, the way you would do this otherwise like without having to do this is maybe like explode like the model out or something like that and then bake it and then bring the model back in not exploded I guess that'd be a way to do it but that seems like such a pain to me. This is just easier. You just say by mesh name, high low. So it's going to look at like each piece and say like, oh, does it have a high and low version in each one? It's going to match those up so it can actually do this. So um, we have, we're going to bake three sets of texture maps because each one of those fins is going to have its own and the body's going to have its own. So we'll just bake all right here. And this will take a little bit. Um, 
but once it's done, you'll see like all that detail come back in. You'll see especially like around these fins and stuff like that, like where right now it's not showing any of that detail from the actual sculpt. See right there, it just popped in. So that baked that normal map right in there. So now what we end up with is a model with, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 polygons, something like that. Um, that looks like the model that we had that was like a couple million, right? Total. Yeah, so there's, this actually looks pretty good. I don't really see any major issues with it. In Substance Painter, you could hold down, I have this set up with my pen, so I don't know what the actual keys are, but there's shift and one of the mouse buttons will let you rotate the environment map on it. But this looks pretty good. And you'll see we can add um, some materials to this so you can get an idea of how those texture, uh, those UV maps actually worked out. Um, we can add this to the body. Let's just see what, this is just some random texture. And look at that, that looks pretty good. And like, you know, like in the areas where like, you know, there was some weird stretching and things like that, or like maybe the direction isn't great. Um, you can always like go for, um, you can always go for um, using a uh, triplanar projection. So like, I'll, maybe I'll show you that on this fin because I think it was this fin that had that seam right here. Let's get like a, a texture where we'll be able to see that seam. Let's say like something with like wood grain in it or something like that, like this should work. Um, so we'll select side. I think it was a side fin that was like that. Oh, that's actually, I ended up renaming those wrong. That's funny. <laughs> ah, there it is. This is that problem I was talking about. So now you have this seam right here. You can see it. In fact, I'll just add a paint layer and just draw it just in case you can't see it on the video. So right here is where that seam is at. And yeah, that's not ideal, obviously. Um, but it's not a big deal because in this particular case you can use triplanar projection which will um, just use a different mapping it's going to kind of ignore like those seams and it's going to like map it based upon the space here and there's a whole bunch of different um, transformation stuff you can do um, when it comes to that um, that mapping you can you know obviously you can scale this still rotation the offset all that stuff and it looks pretty good so that's why i was saying like you know if you're just doing something really quick and you don't want to like actually like you know spend a bunch of time in wrapping stuff and all the rest of it this technique works pretty good i don't know what's going on with this down here on the body itself we can go to tray plane and probably fix that too yeah kind of i think this has something to do with this actual texture map let's get rid of that one and i will let's put this out there let's see what something like that yeah, so you see that's actually pretty nice, and that's not even using triplanar. Um, you'll see like it has a seam up here and stuff like that. If you don't like that seam, you can once again you go here and you go to triplanar projection, and now it's going to kind of blend, kind of like project from a whole bunch of different angles and, and kind of blend them together, um, which is nice. Um, this hardness, I believe, you can see, yeah, watch. watch right here on this that hardness um, is how it blends those maps together up there yeah so I mean there you go like this is pretty good I can see that there's like you know here is going to be a little weird but like I mean like you're going to render this from out here or like it's going to be in the background or something like that or even if you're going to render it here I think it's like totally fine um, this would work great and um, you know we start getting into like masking layers and stuff like that. If I create a folder here, and let's say we get another material and say well, I don't know leather or something like that, like artificial leather, and put that in here, and um, put a mask on that. You start drawing masks on this. Let's 
get a better brush. Basic hardware. Yeah. So you can see that like these maps work great. And if this is not high enough resolution for you, you can go back over here and you can go texture size 496 and it'll redo it. And you see like that's like really super high resolution. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, and then you can just go to town, do whatever you're going to do with that. Um, and that's about it. Like maybe at some point I'll show um, the workflow of how to get this out of Substance Painter and into Blender, like Houdini or something like that. It's kind of interesting. You can actually, the, the whole workflow I did in ZBrush, um, you could actually do in Houdini as well. Um, you could take that model and you can get it into a lower poly version. You can unwrap it in there and everything like that. Houdini has some nice tools for that. It's a little more complicated. Uh, but um, but yeah, you can do it in there. Maybe I'll also show you how you would like do the unwrapping manually in Blender as well. That'd be another option if you wanted to get like really super specific. And also, if like you know, as far as like the retopology goes, um, the Z remesher in this particular case is probably fine for almost every purpose. But like you start getting into like a human body or something like that, you might want to like use something else, like either like do the retopology in Blender manually. Uh, there's Topo Gun. You can do it in Maya or whatever your Thing is maybe I'll show um, a manual retopology thing at some point too. I'll just show you how I do that when I need to do it. But I would say 90% of the time when I'm just doing something quick, um, this is the way that I do it. And I hope that helps you in whatever you're doing. Um, so that's it. Thanks.